How do you find good material to send to your email subscribers? That's what we're going to be talking about in this episode, episode 81 of Coffee Break Blogging. See, there's a lot of talk out there, including by yours truly, on how to get people to opt into your list. And that's certainly an important topic. I mean, really, your email list is essentially the lifeblood of your entire business. So it is important that we get people onto our list. And a lot of the last Many episodes here on Coffee Bait Blogging have talked about that in one way, shape, or form. The question is, then what? What do you send these people after they've opted in? Now, in episode 78, we talked about the autoresponder sequence, and we talked about seven things that you can do with that autoresponder. I gave several ideas. Uh, and these, This is important, but those autoresponder sequences are automatic. Now, there's a lot that you can do on automatic by doing pre-written emails, and it puts a lot of things on this, you know, autopilot. So you can be literally doing the whole stereotype of sitting on the beach, you know, with or without your laptop, whatever, your choice, and emails will be getting sent to people. And this can be done using your autoresponder sequence. So if you've not listened to episode 78, it's just a few episodes ago, go back and do that because it's an it's it's going to be a very useful episode for you. But we also want to talk about where to get some of this material and also where do you get some of this material that's going to be used for your one-off broadcast emails because not everything that you send is going to be automated. Sometimes you're going to just type out the email manually and you're going to send it to people with a one-off quote unquote email blast, which I hate that one, you know, build the blast. In fact, we're going to be talking about that in a coming episode, the, the death of the email blast. But anyway, topic for another day. One thing I want you to keep in mind is that you need to realize that just because that you know that you've talked about something many times before doesn't mean that your new email subscribers know this, okay? So that's one thing that I want to preface everything here with is that you need to remain firmly lodged inside the brain pan of your prospect, not inside your own. You know, and this is one, I've fallen into this trap before because I've been blogging about this topic of blogging and online marketing for six years. I mean, I've been doing it in one way, shape, or form since about... 2008. So from my perspective, other than some of the newer topics or as my approach to things changes, there's a lot of topics out there that I've talked about until my mouth, you know, just bad things. It's just like, you know, I've talked about this stuff to the point where in some cases, I'm just plain out tired of talking about it. But it doesn't mean that that needs to translate over into people who get onto my list. The people who get onto my list today are not me. They're not tired of it. Otherwise, they would not have opted in. You know, it's just it's just a mindset thing. So with that in mind, you can go back and 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 look at your own content and your own blog archives with a fresh set of eyes. Look at it from the perspective of somebody who's brand new to you, to your brand. What can you bring out of that? And how can you give them value on an ongoing basis via your email list? So one of the first things that I recommend that you do is, sh is set up a survey that goes out to new subscribers. And the survey, you know, what you ask them is up to you. But the whole idea of it needs to be to find out what your subscribers need and want. What are they looking for? How are, what are they going to look for from your list that's going to determine whether they are going to remain a longtime subscriber. And I would just straight up ask them, you know, and, and, you know, I've done this in the form of a form that literally is on the confirmation page. And I just give them a survey right there. But I've also done it uh, via my autoresponder where I will ask them a question, like, what is their biggest challenge right now? And I'll just say, hey, just let, you know, hit reply and let me know what your answer is. And I want them to actually hit the reply button and tell me their answer. But the whole idea here is to have a ongoing form of survey built into your list, into your list subscription process, so that you have subscribers actively telling you what they want. And that's very important because if you give them what they want, they're going to know, like, and trust you. And that's important for our marketing, correct? So ask them, find out what good material that you can send them by 
asking them first. Now, from there, let's go into some of the different strategies. And some of this we did talk about in episode 78. Uh, one of them is the idea of sending different lead magnets to them. So in a few different episodes here, we've talked about how you want to have different lead magnets to get onto your list. And these lead magnets are going to attract people of a unique set of interest into the list. That's the entire point of that lead magnet. Thing is, because somebody opts into one of your lead magnets doesn't mean they might not be interested in one of your other lead magnets. So what you can do is cross promote these things. So you have somebody come into lead magnet one, whatever that might be for you. And let's say you, you think that they might be interested in lead magnet number three. Well, you can promote that to them. Now, don't make the mistake of thinking, well, they're already on my list. Let me just send them the lead magnet, you know, like a direct download. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Send them to a squeeze page and have them opt in again. I understand that they're already on your list. But the thing is, go back one episode. Go back to episode 80 where we talked about how this is for segmentation purposes. We want them to actively raise their hands and say, yes, I am interested in the topic of lead magnet number three, whatever that might be for you. And you want them to do that by actually opting in for it, because that gives you permission to now talk, talk to them about that topic, because they've indicated interest. If you just send them the link to a PDF, that's not the same thing. So make your people opt in again, if they're coming into a different entry point on your list, send them a link to a direct squeeze page, not to your blog, not to your sidebar, go directly to a squeeze page, okay? This this is how you make this marketing uh, you know thing go in a circle. You know you're going to have people who come in to one of many different entry points into your list. But you can but and if they don't buy something related to that lead magnet, they're going to end up on your general list. Now is that general list? Are they just done being marketed to? Are you never going to try to sell them anything again? Of course not. The way you can do this, other than running just one-off broadcast promotions to them, is to get them into another entry point into your email funnels by getting them to subscribe to a different lead magnet. And then they're going to be seeing a new offer related to that particular lead magnet, and maybe they'll buy it. Okay? So different lead magnets is a very, very important core component of the overall strategy. And you can definitely send that to your email subscribers. Another thing that you can do is to send money posts. And so you literally go to your archives and you find your money posts and you send those to your general list. And you could do this as a broadcast or you could do it as a autoresponder. Now, what the hell is a money post? I think I've talked about this before, but I actually don't remember off the top of my head. But here's what a money post is. It's essentially a blog post that just gives them a ton of value, but the post was particularly written in order to pre-sell them on something that they're going to buy. Okay. So it's a post, it's a piece of content. It's not a, just a sales pitch. I mean, it's straight up content. You're helping them out, but it essentially is a pre-sell to get them interested in something that you can put as a call to action on that blog post. And so if you write the blog post in such a way where it is attracting those kinds of people um, uh, then and get them into that call to action, that can be a money post. Now, it doesn't really matter if that money post is already getting good traffic or not. It's really what you're doing is looking at that money post as a part of a funnel. It's another entry point into a funnel. Uh, and you can send that as blog content to your subscribers. It helps them. It gives them useful content, top-notch stuff, but it also can potentially get them into another entry point into your sales funnels and maybe get them to buy something. Now, related to the money post idea would be the idea of just going to your blog archives and finding your best stuff, finding your popular posts, your top posts. Uh, and these can be ones that you've handpicked for strategic reasons, because you think that that blog post is just, it's, it's really nailing hard on a topic that you know that your people need and want because they're telling you. And even if Google Analytics is saying that, yeah, that blog post is just performing on average, it's not one of your top traffic posts. If you know that it's fulfilling a need for the people who arrived there, then you can bump it up to the top by highlighting that blog post to your email subscribers using your autoresponder, okay? 
But you can also go into Google Analytics and you can sort your uh, list of blog posts by those that are getting top traffic. And so if you know what your top traffic posts are, you can actually bump them up even further by featuring those already traffic posts to your list, especially if you know that that post is being shared a lot on social media. If it's hitting a if it's hitting a chord with them and they're and they're just like, oh, I just want to retweet the hell out of this post. You know, help them do what they're already doing. And you know, if your audience is showing that, yeah, they really seem to like tweeting this post out or sharing it on Facebook then help them out. Give it to your email list subscribers. They might not have already seen that blog post, so send it to them, and then maybe they will follow suit and give you a little bit of viral promotion, okay? So I hope you can see how you can be a little strategic in what you're actually highlighting to your email subscribers over time. And again, it's all prefaced by the fact that just because you know you've already covered it or something like that, it doesn't matter. These are new subscribers. And you know they, they might not be aware of that awesome blog post you wrote three months ago, okay? To them, it's brand spanking new. To you, you're like, yeah, three months old, you know, but whatever, it's new to them. So put it in your autoresponder or send it out as a broadcast, okay? Your broadcast doesn't have to only be for the new stuff, okay? All right, now, I want to end off with a, uh, a little call to action here. You know, you, I, I practice what I talk about, and I've talked about ending all of your content with a call to action. So you will notice that I do that a lot with the podcast. And I want to point you to a course that I've mentioned before that's inside the Blog Monetization Lab, and it's called List Building Simplified. Now, a big part of List Building Simplified goes into the topic we're talking about right here. What to send to people after they've opted in. OK, because I know that that's a point of confusion for many people. Um, they, they do all, the, all these things and get these tools to get people onto the list. And then more often than I like to see, they drop the ball and they're not actually sending anything to their subscribers because they don't really know what to say. And we've got to get over that. So the course List Building Simplified goes into that. There's also one in there called Master Your List, which definitely goes into that topic, uh, actually in, in a more uh, robust way than even List Building Simplified does. But both of those courses are available exclusively to members of the Blog Monetization Lab. So run on over to blogmonetizationlab.com. You can join today for less than a buck a day. This is, I'm, you know, I'm not fleecing anybody here. This is probably going to be one of the best values that you're going to find when it comes to true blog business training. Okay. That's at blogmonetizationlab.com. And with that, I will see you in a few days with episode 82.